Hey everybody, Ed Brown here. Hey listen, I just wanted to take a little while and kind of talk about uh, my own personal trip down to southeast Kentucky and kind of talk about what I what I encountered while I was there. Um, I, I want to make it perfectly clear, however, that I didn't, I'm not claiming to have had a Bigfoot encounter. I'm not claiming that anything that I saw is for a fact Bigfoot related. However, Collectively, everything that I did get was enough to suggest that uh, my suspicions are correct, that there, there is a Bigfoot living and roaming around that area. Um, we were planning to go down on Tuesday morning. However, because of the snow and everything that was supposed to be coming, we decided to leave Monday morning instead. Um, so we ended up driving down in it. Uh, we got there and they got about... Uh, eight inches of snow on the first day and then another four or five inches after that so we had well over a foot of snow also the the terrain there was was very interesting uh, there were a lot of cliff faces that uh, we were unfortunately unable to get get around or get up uh, due to the weather um, and our area that we could actually research in was actually pretty small so keeping that in mind, I wasn't able to get out and do the things that I was hoping to do, but we did find some interesting things. Uh, I'm going to start off talking about the first thing that happened, which was uh, Monday night. I'm sitting in the cabin, and uh, I'm watching uh, television. It was pretty late at night, and uh, I heard something sounded like a rock, a small rock, or maybe... Uh, a stick or something hit the side of the cabin. I found that pretty interesting. Um, of course, right away I jump up, I grab my shoes, I get my night vision goggles. It's you know late at night, there's no light. I go out, I go around the back door, and I go outside, and I got my goggles on. Unfortunately, all I could see was the cold, you know, the breath coming from my mouth um, and clouding up the vision, so I couldn't see anything through there at all. Um, so the next day. Uh, I went around and I kind of walked around the, the cabin thinking that if something had hit the cabin that it would have left a hole in the snow when it bounced off. Unfortunately, I found nothing. So what it was, I can't explain. You know, the cabin could have just been settling, could have just heard a pop. Oddly enough, when I was telling my brother about it, who, who was also with me, by the way, uh, he said he heard the same thing while I was asleep. So, interestingly enough that we heard two of those, I heard one, my brother heard one. Um, but I couldn't find any evidence of anything hitting the cabin. So that's, uh, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, the next experience I had, uh, that was, this was on Tuesday, I had kind of gone up the mountain as, as best I could, and I had my binoculars out, pretty high powered uh, set of binoculars, and I was looking across to other mountains, and I saw, I don't know how else to explain it, but it was a dark figure walking down the mountain. Um, it went into some a pretty heavy bunch of trees, and I didn't see it come out. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, I'm not saying that it was a Bigfoot. It could have been a hunter. I, I couldn't see it well enough to make out any definition or any details. Uh, just know that it was a dark figure. Uh, it was walking upright. Um, it, it was odd. Um, I'm not ready to declare that I had a Bigfoot sighting yet because I couldn't make any definition. I couldn't make any uh, details out of it. So it is what it is. Um, interesting as it was, it, it wasn't enough. Uh, from my vantage point of where I was at that time, I saw what looked like some tracks up, up the mountain right behind where I was at uh, through the snow. Uh, pretty interesting. I tried to make my way to it, but unfortunately, because of the snow and the steep hills, th there was just no way of getting to it. So I was unable to get up there and investigate that. But it was interesting. You know, from, my, from where I was, even using my high power binoculars, it sure looked like a trackway. Um, there was no one else there, by the way. There was like eight cabins. Uh, we were the only ones there in all the cabins. All the other cabins were empty. Nobody was there. We were there all by ourselves. That much I know for sure. 
Um, as I'm making my way up this mountain and kind of going around this curve, to, I'm going to try to go up and go around and get on the other side. Unfortunately, I couldn't. But while I was walking, I heard a definitive, no question, no bar, unquestionable. I heard a solid wood knock. Now, this was, sounded like somebody took a baseball bat and hit the side of a tree. Very, very definitive. No question about it. It was definitely wood on wood. Um, sounded like it came from the mountain over. Uh, actually, the same area where I was had just seen that dark figure. Oddly enough. Again, I want to make it clear. I'm not suggesting that I saw a Bigfoot and the Bigfoot made the noise. However, collectively, you know, it's a very good possibility. From there, um, I, I froze. I, I listened hoping to hear it again. Unfortunately, it only happened the one time. It was odd, but I but I can't I can't be sure. About an hour and a half later, I had met up with my brother back down towards the bottom and we had gone up the other way to uh, try to get around that way if we could. And again, unfortunately, we were <laughs> unable to get anywhere. Uh, again, these mountains are very steep and we were down at the bottom of like five mountains that all came in together. Uh, I guess I, uh, I guess that's considered a holler from, from what I hear. Uh, so we were down in this holler. Um, we, we found some pretty interesting uh, wood structures and uh, broken branches, things of that nature that were, that were kind of odd. And in fact, one, and I'm gonna kind of go through this little list here. There's because like three or four of them we found. Um, at one point up on the mountain, and I, and I got some pictures, which I'm going to show at the end of this clip. Um, we're going to kind of go through some of the pictures, but, uh, the one, one picture has, it was pretty interesting because there were some pretty good sized logs, you know, uh, they were about this big around, uh, which is about five inches in diameter, give or take. And they were laying, and there was three of them. Two were right next to each other, laying perfectly together into a, into a crevice or into a uh, Y of an, another tree. And then there was another larger one, uh, longer anyway, about the same size and diameter, but longer that was up high. So it was like they were all three running the same angle, but the longer one started further off and went up, went up farther up the, up the tree. So that was kind of interesting. And of course you'll see that picture in, in a few minutes, but, um, so I probably didn't explain that very well, but you know I think you'll get the gist when you when you see it. Um, so we saw that, and then we saw um, a tree that was probably another good six inches in diameter that was literally just snapped in half, and the snap came from about four feet up in the air, four or five feet up in the air. That was pretty interesting. There, I was able to get to that one and kind of get a good look at it. Uh, I didn't see any hair on it or anything like that, so you know we didn't get any evidence from it other than some pictures, which which are pretty cool. Um, next to that, about five feet away, there was another smaller tree that was also broken uh, in the same direction. So could it have been wind? It would have taken an awful lot of wind to break a tree that, that size. That's all I can say. Um, the tree itself was not very big, not very tall, because uh, it, it, obviously it was laying there. Uh, snow had already piled up on top of it, but the break was very fresh. I would say the break happened within just a few days of us being there. So we, so we went on down a little bit farther, and then we found another section that, now this completely baffles me. I, I, I can't put a finger on this. We found a tree that had up in the tree, and this was about 15 feet up in the tree. That's why I'm so baffled by it. There were branches that were broken and twisted and pulled down. Now, the branches were still there, but they were hanging straight down. So that was that was pretty interesting, too. Um, and, of course, I got some pictures of that as well, which we'll see at the end of this. But um, we were, so we were standing there, and, and, and I'm like, okay, let's see if we can make any uh, any contact, you know. So my brother, who uh, can do can do a whoop, I can't. Um, I asked him to go ahead and do a uh, a call. So so he called out, and 
oddly enough, about 15 seconds after his first call, heard a very definitive from the mountain right up behind the cabin up top. We heard a whoop, whoop, very definitive. And that's exactly what it was. It was two quick whoops, and uh, that was odd. So we waited a few more minutes, and I asked him, I said, do, do that again. You know, and he's, so he lets out another Bigfoot yell, um, and then we heard again, about another 10 or 15 seconds later, we heard again, very definitive, whoop, 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 another series of them. And it was like a two and then a one. And it was definitely interesting. Uh, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't explain it, what it could have been. I have no idea. Uh, it, it wasn't an owl. It wasn't, uh, you know, any other animal that I could think of. I know that people say, you know, well, you just heard a, a barn owl. Well, I, I don't think so. And, uh, you know, is, is it possible? Sure. Uh, I, I, I just know this. With all that stuff combined, I was... I'm fairly certain that there are Bigfoot living in that area. Um, but I, unfortunately, because of the weather and the steep mountains, I was unable to get to different places to do uh, close-up looks at things. Uh, it was just impossible to get there. I am going to try this again. I'm going to go back down probably a little bit different area than where I was at this time. Uh Hopefully somewhere I can move around a little bit easier. If if it's hard for me to move around, it's probably going to be kind of hard for them to move around as well. Um, but I do know that whatever it was I saw on that other mountain, that is about the direction where the, the wood knock came from. So that was pretty interesting. Um, well, that kind of covers what I personally experienced and what I personally saw myself. And I do have some pictures that I'm going to here, share here at the end. And uh, you guys uh, tell me what you think. Be curious to hear. Thanks. Head out.